All right, it looks like everybody has successfully navigated a uh, feed loop and you have made it to the closing remarks. And again, um, after Kathy's uh, comments here and, and closing ceremony, please stick around and network with folks. The networking button is over here. You can network in the lobby. You can network in a specific session. You can network with people just by texting and then, uh, and then using the video chat. So we hope you stick around afterwards and, and chat with us for a while. And don't forget to fill out that survey. Um, without further ado, I am so grateful to introduce uh, Kathy Bailey. Kathy is the executive director of the Greater Cincinnati Waterworks. Kathy has over 28 years of water utility experience in utility management and strategic planning and leads a team that ensures effective stormwater solutions for the city of Cincinnati and safe drinking water for a regional population of more than 1.1 million citizens. Uh, Ms. Bailey is a strong champion for key visionary behind an award-winning lead service line replacement to remove and replace all lead service lines in the, in the city of Cincinnati within 15 years. She holds a bachelor's of science degree in chemistry from the University of Cincinnati and started her water industry career spending two years at the US EPA as a research chemist. Kathy speaks often at conferences and other water summit seminar uh, webinars, sharing experience and knowledge on strategic planning methods, employee engagement and empowerment, and the importance of diversity and inclusion in the workforce, affordability, team project solutions, performance management, and continuous improvement. Kathy, it is an amazing, amazing person. And we are so lucky to get to hear from you today, Kathy. Take it away. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. You've certainly heard quite a bit um, from a number of speakers and I'm happy to be here to join in on the conversation as well. Um, so I would like to talk about connections and how we will be um, focusing on connections and need to focus on connections as we communicate. So first slide, please. All right. So we all know, right, if we want to communicate, we've got to connect. And we know if we're connecting well, well, that's a good thing. But we know if we're not connecting well, that's certainly bad and can go sideways and, and go even worse um, if we're not connecting in a good way. And so I want to really focus on what type of connections have we made and, and can make. And so I would like to share several stories with you today um, to discuss the importance of connections. And so the first one is really about knowing your audience. And, and all these stories are, are real. They've actually, I've experienced these, um, some good, some bad, but they are real stories. And so I would like to share them with you. Um, but the first one is really me and a couple other Greater Cincinnati Waterworks employees um, going to speak to the Plumbers Association. And so I don't know about you, but in Cincinnati, the Plumbers Association has been around for a while and the Plumbers Association is what it is. And so um, they have not changed in many years. They are at this point not interested in diversifying, at least their membership that appears in their monthly meetings. And so me and my team enter um, to speak with them about our lead service line replacement program. And it is what, 40, 45 white males. And of course I've been in this situation before um, to realize that this is not going to be good because more than likely if they are, if they're, if I'm speaking to them, they're going to be more focused on me and not the message. From that, I mean, they will likely um, wonder, how did she get to that position? Why is she in that position? Um, and all of those things will float through their hair because this is a traditional um, organization that is really not, um, as I mentioned, diversified at this point and, and sometimes do not understand the importance of diversity. Been there, done that with them many times. And so, the connection here was not going to be good if I was going to be the person standing up speaking to them. And so we needed to pivot and make sure that we had someone that looked like them um, or someone that they probably would feel a little more comfortable with to make the right connection um, so that the message could clearly be heard. And so we had to match the speaker to the audience um, so we could connect in the best manner. 
All right. The second story I would like to share involves, again, our lead service line replacement program. This was a fascinating um, situation where we went out into the community. We partnered with a facilitator who brought us um, neighborhood leaders to discuss our program. And we wanted to get some feedback on whether or not our program was going to work. Um, and so in this case, we needed to really sit down with the customer. We needed to connect in a way where um, instead of us giving a presentation, no, we needed to sit down. We actually sat down, we had a meal with them first. We sat down and ate together. And then we started talking about the, the program and explaining it and just really having a discussion. We took notes, they took notes, you know, and, and what was amazing with this group is um, this, the feedback that we received by connecting with them helped us shape the lead service line replacement program that we have today. We had a number of people in that room, they were entrepreneurs and they gave us feedback that said, this works fine for us. But then there were a number of women, um, several of the, the um, older African-American women you can see in the picture that told us, this is not gonna work for us. We're barely holding on to our homes. Um, this is the same for other family members and this is, is not gonna work. And so we realized in connecting with them that we were about to put another program into our community that would further divide our residents, our citizens by race. And so in, because we had made the proper connection with them, we realized and gained some valuable information that was gonna be helpful for us to then pivot and go back and change our program. Now, there are times when certain groups expect a certain level position or a title to come and speak with them. Um, this was the case with the NAACP. And I don't know how much you know about the NAACP, but the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, it's been around probably since 1910, 1909, 1910. I think the Cincinnati chapter has probably been around since 1915, 16, somewhere in there. Um, but they're deeply rooted in their culture, their history, and they expect that if someone is coming to connect with them, to speak with them, then they're, you're gonna send a certain level of person. And in this case, since they knew that the leader of the water utility was an African-American, they fully expected for me to show up. You know, So it was a case of, no, you are not sending anyone else over here to talk to us. You best send the director. Um, and in fact, <laughs> um, just a, a funny sidebar related to this connection, I went to speak to them. They had a number of questions about the water utility, how we do things, how we protect, you know, when there's a spill on the Ohio River, et cetera. And I went to speak with them about two hours one evening after they went on this long rant on Facebook and I agreed to come speak with them. Um, but one of the sidebars was, you know, one of the elders in the, in the community told me, and look here, honey, the next time you come speak to us, you need to if you're gonna be wearing a dress, you need to make sure that you have pantyhose on because that's the professional look you should have as a, as a director of the utility. And so I even made an additional connection at that meeting because she really schooled me on, put some pantyhose on before you come talk to us. And so trust and believe, if I have to go back to Avondale to speak with them and I have a dress on, I've got my pantyhose on because I'm not trying to hear from her again. So you make connections and sometimes you make some other connections that can help you in your career and help you in how you can communicate with your residents. And she certainly helped me that day. The fourth story is an example of when we made some assumptions in a neighborhood. And this was, this actually turned out okay, but it was, it was not good when we initially arrived. In fact, I was embarrassed on how we had approached this. But this was a situation where we arrived um, to, again, talk about our, our, at this time, it was newly formed lead service line replacement program. And we knew that it was gonna be a challenge from some of our lower income um, neighborhoods to join the program. And so we wanted to make sure we went out and talked with them, explained the program, et cetera. And so we decided to go to Price Hill and Price Hill has a larger population of Latino customers 
And so we we had a facilitator again, and we arrived and we were ready to speak with them. Now we made some assumptions. We we assumed that although they were Latino customers, that they could um, speak some English and they could read some English, etc. And we got there and we had just our normal um, paperwork and our normal brochures and everything else. Um, and we walked into the room and they had arrived. They had interpreters um, and they could not read through the brochures and the information that we brought. And that was a swift smack in the face that we needed to certainly connect much better than we were attempting to connect with them. We were not making the proper connection. And so it, it made us go back and get a lot of our brochures and literature um, translated into Spanish, you know, and actually we work on, on other languages as well, but it was not the best connection or the, the best um, approach we could make to, to make the right connection. Um, the facilitator in this case, um, his partnership with us saved that day, but we were not prepared and we had made some assumptions. And so really the lesson here is for us to do that homework, be prepared, um, do that knowledge discovery so we can go into a situation so that we are making the right connection so we can communicate the best manner that we can. And then the last story I would like to share with you today is really um, involves our Citizens Water Academy. This was a new program that we started last year. Um, we had planned to have another one this year, but COVID-19 has halted our second class. And so this was an opportunity for us to start this academy. Uh, we had about 25 uh, residents from our community that applied, came into the program, and then spent um, one day a week with us, uh, three hours, I believe it was each night for five weeks to learn more about how we treat the water, everything that we do um, really from the river to the tap. And so we were excited to provide tours to them, um, to sit down with them, to discuss things, to show them a number of aspects of our operations. And, and really the connection we wanted to make here was to create those additional ambassadors um, to, that could help go out and tell our story in the community. And in doing so, then that would give us another voice, more voices to connect with the community and share what we do and how we do it and educate um, more of our customers on everything that we bring to the table. And so these experiences that I've shared have, have taught me a number of things, but they certainly have taught me to, to continually ask questions. Um, and I think a lot of what we've heard today speaks to that. You know, how can we do better um, so that we're communicating properly, that we're connecting the best way that we can. And so these are just a few questions. I'm not intending to read them here. I'm not gonna do that. Um, but just really, these are questions that I often ask myself. You know, how can I do the best to emotionally connect with a customer? You know, if I'm having a bad day, and we all know we have bad days, but if I'm supposed to connect with some customers at night and I'm not able to pivot from that bad day, perhaps I'm not the one that needs to go speak to our customers at night. You know, what's plan B, what's plan C to have somebody arrive and speak to those customers? Sometimes we have to do that, but I've gotten into the habit of really asking myself these questions so that I can be um, the best that I can be to connect with the customers so that we can communicate. And so in summary, I would just like to, to offer to you a number of things, um, but three of them certainly align with everything that we've heard today. And that is to care, connect, and communicate. Care about what we're doing, care about the customer, and then in doing so, connect with those customers, those residents, our community, so that we can then communicate in the best manner that we can. Um, we know if, if we are not matched properly with the audience that we're speaking to, if we cannot engage, if we are not compassionate, if we can't show empathy, um, if we can't do all of those things, then often the words that we're speaking, whatever we're sharing, that message is lost. Um, those ears are just not ready to, to hear 
Um, and possibly our body language might not even show that we are connected as well. And so I just offer that we, as we move forward and we're always trying to improve our communication, we want to be the best storytellers that we can. We heard a lot about that today. We want to be authentic in what we're doing. Um, we want to be truthful. We want to be honest. We want to show that we're caring. But if we're not making the best connection that we can, then, then that message can possibly be lost. And so I would encourage us um, to certainly do more and be more as we try to connect with our audiences. And I think that's that's just as important as the message um, in making that connection. And so with that, I'd like to just um, remind you to care, connect, and communicate. And thank you for allowing me to um, speak on this topic today. Kathy, that was amazing. Uh, we are so, so grateful for you to be here with us and to share, um, share these thoughts. Um, I'm always blown away when you speak, and uh, from the from the chat that I see here, um, others definitely are as well. And so uh, I think everybody wants to come and have dinner with you. That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm reading from the chat. So even in COVID times, they'll figure it out. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, again, if you enjoyed this event, we're going to have five more, one a month. Uh, through February with some amazing topics, nutrients, construction, leadership and development, uh, women of water, uh, just so many amazing things um, coming up for all of you to enjoy. Stormwater, sorry, that was the fifth one. I don't want to leave them out. Um, please fill out our survey so we can keep making those events um, uh, fantastic for you as the attendees and how we can uh, continue to serve you as PNCWA. Again, thank you to our sponsors, Brown and Caldwell, Carollo, Jacobs, West Yost, Leeway Engineering Solutions, Sladen, HDR, Tetra Tech, and Kennedy Jenks. Uh, we couldn't put these events on without them, so thank them individually. Uh, we're now gonna have uh, 30 minutes of just group chat and time to spend with one another. So uh, feel free to go over to the networking over there or uh, up to the lobby or wherever you'd like to. And I think our speakers are hanging out there too. So uh, come and find them and chat with them uh, as you need to. So again, thank you for joining today and feel free to reach out to myself or any of our speakers if you have more questions. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>